Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is going to be about my 8088 modular motherboard project here. And I mainly want to give an update today on the uh, port 61 fix, which if you've been watching my previous videos, you know that I had to fix port 61 to be a read-write port instead of just a write only. And I've already done that on my seven slot boards and I've gone back and I've now done it to my four slot board. So that's the biggest change here. I'm going to go over the whole project for those who have not seen this before, and then I'll give a quick uh, demo of it booting up. So what we have here is we've got a main board that allows for the, the processor to plug into this extended slot here, as well as memory can plug into one of the ISA slots as well. So on the main board, you can see there is no memory and there is no processor. And I made it this way so that you can update the memory as you would like or change out the processor as you would like. Some of the processor options we have is a V40 here. And you can see the 8088 versus the V40 takes a lot less chips. And so that is an option to plug in. You also have, um, like if you want to do different clock speeds or if you want to do a V20, you could take multiple cards and you could swap them out depending on what your application is. So on the main board, when I built it, I built it with the idea of putting as much of the common shared items between the two processors here on the main board and only putting on the processor card what is needed for that particular processor. So as you can see, the V40 only has two latches and a data transceiver because that's all that's required for that processor. The 8088 has what's built into the V40. It's got a interrupt controller, a system timer, the clock, uh, the IO memory read write decoder, and then your three la or your two latches and transceiver there, and then your processor goes here. So that's what's on the processor card, and you've got the extensions here, which is on both, which gives you the items that are not traditionally available on an ISA bus, such as the IRQ1 off the uh, keyboard here comes up through the extension. The reset pin comes up through the extension. And if you see my seven slot boards, you know that there's a space for a DMA controller. So the hold and hold acknowledge pins also come through the extension. And then on this board, the main board, because I've got the keyboard and the USB host that plugs in there. I've got the decoding here for port 60, port 61, and E0, and then on the extension it comes up for port 20 and port 40 for the system timer and interrupt controller. Keep in mind that's all in hex, so we're not talking decimal here. On the uh, main board you also have a clock of its own and a clock divider which is for the uh, keyboard there, and it provides the correct frequency up through the extension for the system timer to feed the speaker, which is down here. The ISA click also comes from the processor that's on the main board, and that is used with the DMA controller. So you've got a 4.77 megahertz DMA controller for the speed on that. Um, and it's independent of the processor's crystal. So you can put like an eight megahertz or a four megahertz, whatever megahertz you want on your processor. Then our uh, memory here, this one's 512K. And if you've been watching, you know that I recently made a 640K memory card. And that was the entire purpose of this being on its own card was to be able to change the memory as needed. Now that does create a disadvantage with this board, which is you run out of card slots really fast. Um, but for me, I don't have a lot of ISA card slot, or cards to begin with, so this is just fine. And this fits in the smaller ATX case that only has four slots, and it doesn't require the larger ATX case. So you can plug in your video card, you got a blank one, your memory, and then your processor. And that blank one, you put a serial port or network card, but that's pretty much it. You're, you're limited to one extra slot. So that, that is the one disadvantage to this board over the seven slot is the limitation there. So I'm going to put it together. And now these normally have a bracket on them. I just don't have it on there today. And you, you can plug these in 
The memory can go in any slot. There's no particular slot for that. I usually put it next to the processor. The processor does go in the first slot, like so. And then your USB host plugs in directly into the side here. Now, I have seen these on an ISA card before, but I just went ahead and just plugged it right into the side. It works just fine that way. So let's uh, turn the camera here. Now, when you plug in the power, you can do a 24 pin or a 20 pin. And there's actually a little line right there that says 24 or 20. That kind of, so your 20 goes on the bottom there. And then you've got your graphics card, and this is just a VGA card. And today we're going to be booting uh, the third-party BIOS, not the one I wrote. And it'll auto-detect the uh, graphics card and should boot up just fine. So let's turn it here to the screen. We'll turn it on. Okay, so went right into it. It detected the module. It's counting the memory. This one's running DOS 622. There you go, it runs. Now, like I said, the purpose of this video and the update to the board is it fixes the speaker. Now, let's just run a game real quick. So in the past, if you played SOP with, the minute you hit a key, the sound would be disabled. And that was because what was happening is the keyboard handler would take the value that's on port 61 and store it and then port 61 is what disables the keyboard on most computers. Mine actually doesn't disable the keyboard at all. It's not even connected to disable it. But the software is wrote that way. It disables the keyboard, theoretically. And then it does what it has to do with the keyboard controller. And then it re-enables the keyboard with that stored value from port 61. Well, where it couldn't read from port 61, it was just getting a generic whatever was on the data bus value and then writing that back to port 61, which then turns off your speaker. So now let's just, I'll just show this now running correctly. So there's the sound. And you can fly. And there is uh, the speaker working just fine. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, post a comment or uh, we do have the Discord page going. You can uh, make comments there, or ask questions there as well. So anyways, thanks for checking out my video today.